I auditioned for Billy. I auditioned for Skeet's part, which I didn't get. Um, spoiler alert. I didn't get Skeet's part. <laughs> All right. So I want to start off asking how it feels to realize how long it's been since Scream has come out. Because it must be a little bit crazy for you guys to hear this. Uh, well, I imagine, imagine your birth, because you're probably about... 22. <laughs> 22. Guys, I'm 31 today. So. Oh my God. <laughs> Happy, oh birthday. My God. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> so you're six. So think back to when you were six and all the things that happened between six and 31. That would be super weird, right? Like yeah. you'd be like, oh my God, that was a hundred years. The person you were when you were six compared to 31. Yeah. I mean, that is, when you put it that way, I don't know why you're, I don't know why this relationship all of a sudden strikes home for me. I know. But picture your 31 to six is really unnerving. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, it's a, you know, I I, I think in terms of, you know, the work and the movie and and all that, it's, um, it's it's pretty amazing that, to be honest, it's, uh, it's, and it's uh, flattering that people are still interested in something we did so long ago. Um, and we we go to these conventions, horror conventions and stuff, Matt and I do typically together and and Nev a lot and you know, and and it's a it's a fan base that continues to grow, that gets passed generation to generation. And for whatever reason, uh, the film just continues to resonate with people. And when you think about it that way that, you know, both of us have had 30 plus year careers, you know, it's, um, it's one film in a, in a canon of work, but it's one that has certainly for both of us, uh, resonated continually. Um, yeah, I do think it's super symbolic of our years, right? I mean, we were all, we sort of had done movies before and coming to the movie, we had, you know, had experience, but nothing like this. And now that, you know, here we are 25 years later, it's sort of symbolic of our youth, right? It it, it sort of holds that place. And you look at back at these pictures of, we were just talking about these pictures of the premiere of the original movie. And, you know, we look like babies. I mean, we were babies. And um, so it's nice. Look, I I think it's it's sort of like, there's a, a sweetness about the movie for all of us because it's such a seminal part of our youth. Mm-hmm. Um, that it, and it holds a special place. And where we were then, there was no phones, there's no cell phones, there's no, you know, Instagram or Facebook, any of that crap. So you were like together and we were, you know, we ate dinner together every weekend and we would get off of work at six, you know, in the morning and sort of go have a beer in David Arquette's room. And we were hanging out. Like we were this young crew of young actors and, and sort of this innocence about that movie that really, I think we collectively all really love. When was the last time you guys watched the movie in fall? I had not seen it for years and saw it about two months ago. My goddaughters uh, turned 11 and wanted to see it. And I was, they live in Phoenix and I was there. And so my buddy was like, you know, do you want to watch it with them? And I, and it was the first time I'd seen it in a long time. And uh, it was really fun. It was fun to, yeah, it was fun. Cause I had not seen it since 97, I think. So I saw, I saw the 20th anniversary. So Kevin Williamson and I hosted Q and A and I saw it my wife cause she had never seen it before. We've been married 21 years now and she had never seen it. We were dating. She's like, I could care less. So, um, and so that was super fun to watch it with her and then to like sort of answer questions with Kevin, who we don't see very often and sort of hear his take and sort of like his pride in the movie. It was really, a, uh, a, it was a really powerful night for me. Yeah, absolutely. What is your earliest like memory of it? Is it the audition process? Is it getting the script? Like wh- when you think that? Yeah. I mean, I remember where I was when I got the script. I remember that whole process of reading it and and being blown away by it and intrigued by it and and you know already starting to you know because I had to audition for it, trying to put my mind into Billy Loomis's mind and like all you know. So that's certainly my earliest. Um, memory of it and and it was pretty impactful um 
you know, a lot of times you'll read a script and fall for it and, and you don't get to do it. So at that time to like fall for a script and then get, you know, make your way into it and get it. And like, it's, it was really exhilarating um, and a challenge, an instant challenge. I, I definitely remember having the script and reading the script. I was, I was just saying that I was in this dilapidated pool house in the Hollywood Hills. I was coming up from New York and read the first 20 pages and there was only like one singular light. And I was like, oh my God, it freaked me out so much. I, I shut the script. But then I auditioned, I was just remembering the audition. I auditioned for Billy, I auditioned for Skeet's Bar, which I didn't get. Um, spoiler alert, I didn't get Skeet's Bar. But the, uh, I think I actually, so then I had to come back, they asked me to come back and audition in two hours for Wes Craven. And he actually gave me the part in the room. Wow. Which is funny, because I just, it was just, we were just thinking about, we were just talking about Wes and how much we love Wes. And I was thinking like all these memories started flowing back of Wes in my life. And I think he gave me the part in the room, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, that is wild. Skeet, did you audition for any other parts or just Billy? Just Billy, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was such a punk in those days. I don't <laughs> Some things never change. Just so <laughs> <laughs> um, what, when you guys, obviously you guys did some of the fun, I would assume some of the most fun scenes together because obviously the end of the movie has the best, the best parts of it. So yeah. um, how was, what do you guys remember from filming that together? Like, was it as fun as it seemed on camera? It was it was fun. It was electric, and it, but it went that one scene, that kitchen scene. I think we shot for how many days, Matt? Like five days. Five working days. Like um, it went on and on and on and on, and it's such a high energy level that it was exhausting. But at the same time, out of that exhaustion came some pretty unexpected moments accidentally hitting him with the phone you know which accidentally, accidentally. <laughs> was accidental um the blood was so stickier the syrup whatever whatever which would lead to holding it longer not throwing it at my face that's fine it's fine <laughs> we were just through in therapy we're over this moment yeah, I was going to ask if any of it was ad lib, if any of the lines, because some of the lines you guys say are both so great, and that, especially that scene. Yeah, I think one of the great things about um, Wes is that he allowed for that. He loved that. He wanted it as written, and then, you know, the script was so great. Most of the stuff, you know, is what Kevin wrote. But every now and then he would, you know, ask, you just do it different. He would just do, you know, have, take another take at it and, and have a run. So mm -hmm. we would throw stuff left and right, and some of it stuck and some of it didn't. Um, but yeah, I have a memory of that, of that last sequence and we were all covered in blood and Skeet and Av and I sitting three across on the wall. I wish I had a picture of this moment, but all of us, because it was this, you know, make this caro syrup sort of stuff. We would literally sit there and play with the blood on our hands and like do this thing where it'd stick and you'd watch the threads go across. And I have a distinct memory of all three of us at the same time going like this for like an hour. Cause you're like, you know, you're zombied out because you're at, you know, the energy level's at like a 10. Yeah, of so. course. Um, obviously the franchise has lived on for so long. We've gotten so many sequels. We have another one coming. Um, how do you guys feel about being the two that haven't been able to, haven't been able to pop up in these because of, obviously because of the ending. Total bull crap, total <laughs> bull crap. He feels he didn't die. I didn't, dude, I will throw a TV on my face right now to prove it. TV, I feel like, here's the deal. This two-ton TV, I'm going to throw on my face. And if I die, then I will let this moment go. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. It is what it is. I, you know, we played our parts. I mean, it's, you know, it's... Uh... <laughs> I don't want to do that, by the way. I now want to go throw a TV on my head. Can I help? Yes, it would be super funny, actually. Take like, I... a big TV and... I think the TVs now you wouldn't die, but the TVs back then you definitely would. I would not die. I would not die. They had to add those sparks. Those sparks aren't real. If you die, you will let you is that what we're saying? He's still wandering around. So there's a chance he's going to pop up in this, this new one. That's what's going to happen. That's what I wish. I, tell, tell the people that make these decisions. I'm available. I will say this. I did go to Scream 4, and as I was walking by Bob Weinstein, he's like, Leonard, get ready for five. I'm like, okay. I'm ready. <laughs> as you wish. 
<laughs> um, I was gonna ask him. He meant as a fan. He meant he's me. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> you're gonna love five kids. <laughs> um, have you guys seen the other ones? Have you like, are you continuous fans of it? I, have, I saw I, two. I saw two and five. I have not seen three. Two and four. Two and four. Two and yeah. Four. Okay. Okay. Um, I also want to ask about the cast because obviously. It, the, every single person in it is such a huge star. What was, like, you talked a little bit about this without being on cell phones and things like that. Sets were very different now. So what was, like, a favorite memory you guys have of hanging out with, with Nev and with Courtney and all these great people on set? I, I, so many. I mean, you know, just the general vibe of everybody together was from the, from the first day just seemed meant to be and and you know there was just such a camaraderie and and yeah i think i think not having social media or any of that you know it just everybody just came together and was in the moment i remember going to ride go-karts in napa valley together and and just all the mornings we would finish work from the night shoots and you know go have drinks in our cat's room and um and people would be leaving the hotel to go on their tours through Napa Valley. And we'd be coming in half bloody, like shell shocked looking this collective group of punks. And uh, I don't know, it, it felt like we were in our own world, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I have this memory of Nev and I and Jamie Kennedy jumping in a car at rap on a Friday night, which is six in the morning mm -hmm. and driving to San Francisco, listening to Coldplay. No, not Coldplay. Listening to, oh, Oasis. <laughs> listening to Oasis, um, their first album and driving and like Nav sleeping on the bed and Jamie and I sleeping on the floor and hanging out with the two of them in San Francisco for the weekend. It's one of those weird memories. You're like, what a weird group of people. But like we would spend, you know, we every weekend we'd get together and we'd all have to dinner together. And like, there was this collection of, you know, there's this camaraderie between us that I think we all share today. The idea that this movie is such an important part of our youth. Like, I think that there's this love in this cast that's sort of like nothing I've ever experienced before. 100%, yeah, for sure. Um, well, before we wrap, say in an alternate universe, your characters did survive. What What is Billy doing today, Steve? Uh, I think he's teaching, you know, English. It, and <laughs> Billy can't read. Let's be, let's be, let's be. By the way, Billy and Stu fall in love. They adopt many stray dogs from Costa Rica and they rehabilitate uh, small dogs. And then they slaughter people on the weekends. That's their fun. Sounds great. I mean, Stu's still alive, so he's still out there doing it. No, he's alive! He's Stu, Stu works for Panasonic testing TV. He's, he's uh, about to get out of prison. Stu's great time. Right. He, he, was, he it was 17 years old. He spent 25 years in jail. He's about to get out. Look at my face. I could be like horribly deformed. <laughs> 